Good morning, Cross Church family. This is Brandon Bowen back with you again for another elder devotional. As always, I pray that this message finds you healthy and blessed and ready to charge into another week with the Lord by your side. Uh, I'm going to start this morning with a simple question. Is it possible to be both guilty of and afflicted by the same thing? If so, I think I suffer from a condition called procrastination consternation. And no matter how much TV I watch, I still haven't seen a commercial for a medication, believe it or not, <laughs> that will treat that. But we're going to find what that is uh, through, this, uh, through this devotional, and we're going to find out what does treat it. You know, around the house, I find myself procrastinating about little fixes, little things. Uh, fixing this or that, you know, where a screw or a nail or wood glue is needed. Uh, case in point, uh, we had a kitchen chair that needed to be fixed. And I went out and I bought this very special glue for it. It amounts to more than just wood glue. Uh, because I was getting tired of fixing it. It was constantly popping out of there, the little braces at the bottom. And so I went out and I bought this special glue, and then I waited. For what? I don't know. But many weeks went by before I addressed this chair, because the chair really wasn't being used. And so I set it to the side. It was still under the table, and its crossbars were laying in it, just waiting to be glued back in place. And when I finally got around to it, glue works great. Everything's fine. It's fixed. But it took me so long to get there. I find the same thing. I do it. I do it to myself with my Ryobi batteries. I have a Ryobi tool set, and I'll need to go and fix something, and I'll find that the best battery I need for it is dead because, well, last time I used it, I said, "Oh, I'll put it on the charger when I'm done cleaning up," and then guess what? I forget to put it on the charger. It drives me absolutely nuts. And I'll even do this, you know, addressing, you know, small automotive issues. Uh, a while back, I took the change pocket out of my wife's van because it needed to be fixed. Well, I applied a fantastic fix to it, but it's attached to a little frame that you mount back in the van, and it's all one piece. So I got done fixing the pocket and put it back inside its little frame and opened it and shut it and everything worked great, but guess what I didn't do? I didn't reinstall it in the van. It sat in the van with its screws for probably a year, if I have to be honest, and embarrassingly so honest. But those are the little things I find myself doing. Procrastination is my worst enemy. I hate it. That is the one of the number one things I hate about myself is I'll put these little things on the back burner. And the consternation part comes when I'm surprised to find something broken or not ready to use when it is needed and having that, oh yeah, moment. You idiot, why didn't you fix it when it was when it was needed, you know, back then? You need it now and you don't have it ready. Well, that's one of those things that just absolutely drives me crazy. And it's generally accompanied by anger, <laughs> but just not enough anger to address the issue. Uh, and so that's the consternation half of my dilemma. In keeping with that consternation is also the fact that over time, all these little things I've procrastinated tend to add up. And now I see it as this huge, overwhelming list of things that I need to accomplish. And that just drives my procrastination even further down the road. Um, instead of seeing things as, you know, what do they say about eating an elephant? You can't do it in one bite. It takes many. And so that's what I've started applying. Uh, because I'm getting tired of kicking cans down the road. So I've started addressing these little things, you know, one thing here, one thing there, usually trying to do something every evening or so, you know, after work. Go knock another little thing off the list. So instead of 20 things that might take 20 minutes each, these things are starting to get pared down, whittled down a bit. But as I have done so, 
you know, it's also caused me to wonder what else I've left broken or incomplete or neglected in relational or spiritual terms. Where have I ignored the prompting of the Holy Spirit? And what does he want me to do without any more delay? Well, for starters, we have to know what it looks like to answer his promptings and convictions. Where our motivations are not rooted in guilt and shame, but in our love and obedience to him. It's so much more than having a clear conscience, where we are motivated by our love of self. In Romans 8, 12 through 15, and I'll be reading from the NIV, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought you adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The key verse there for me is that led by the spirit, there are 14. For those who are led by the spirit are the children of God. And being led by the spirit, you know, it's I don't believe that's just the the do's and don'ts of the Bible. It's also listening to what he's asking us to do. Uh, personally, on a personal level, on a you and me level, where it goes even beyond scripture and what scripture says to do or not do, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. So in Psalms 119, 57 through 60, David cries out to God, showing us his reverence to the Lord and how to respond to his commands. The same holds true for us as we also respond to him by heeding the direction of the Spirit. In verse 57 uh, from Psalm 119, it says, You are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. Verse 60, I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Now, this should go without a lot of explanation. Whether you're a parent or a child listening to this, teenager, whoever, whether you have kids or you don't have kids. As parents, we all know how it makes us feel when our kids listen and obey immediately. And as kids, if you remember being that or you are one now, we know how much easier things tend to go for us when we do what we're told to do and when we do it immediately. It's a no-brainer. So just imagine that on God's scale. So my question for us today is, what are we putting on the back burner that we are being prompted to correct? Is it more productive prayer time? Are we just breezing through it just to check it off and go on down the list and get ready for bed or get ready for the day and and uh, we just keep it short and simple and sweet? Or are we really truly diving in uh, to our time with the Lord? Is it meaningful time in the Word, as Zach and Daniel have just preached on, you know, born out of uh, not only our desire for knowledge, but our love of the Word itself as Christ has? Is it some kind of sin in our life, something that we repeatedly go back to, bad habits, attitudes? Is it, uh, is he asking you to repair a broken or strained relationship? You know, these are all things that might be the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our lives, asking us to address these items. And really, guess what? The Lord, he'd rather us do it sooner than later because there's so much reward in it at the end. So many things that we are shorting ourselves. And so what are we waiting on to put our house in order spiritually? Imagine that relief and joy we get to experience when we promptly follow the direction of the Holy Spirit in any of these areas or more, whatever you have going on, that he's just nibbling at you. To continue to wait is not only disobedient through complacency, but it robs us. 
it's like willingly waiting six months to buy a car while yours is up in blocks in the driveway. Unless you like a lot of walking, that doesn't make any sense at all. And so today, as I leave you and prepare to pray, I'll leave you with a quote by Hillel the Elder, who was a Jewish elder uh, in the first century. Uh, lived until the year 10. Year 10. So Christ would have been 10 years old when Hillel the Elder passed. So he kind of bridged uh, that turn right there. And he asked, if not now, when? Which basically means, when will there ever be a better opportunity than right now to face your issues? Why wait? Please pray with me. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and how it has shown us to follow the Spirit's lead, to listen to it, to understand what its prompts and its convictions mean, to steer us toward those things in our lives that need to be addressed, that only you can address with us. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would continue to show us those places in our lives where we need to listen to the Spirit more and where we need to be led by it. And we ask that you would bless the remainder of our week and bring us back together uh, safely and uh, with thankfulness and praise in our hearts for you. And we ask this in your son's precious heavenly name. Amen. Bye-bye.